Miss Moore Thought Otherwise, How Anne Carol Moore Created Libraries for Children. Written by Jan Pindro, illustrated by Debbie Atwell. Once in a big house in Limerick, Maine, there lived a little girl named Annie Carol Moore. She had large gray eyes, seven older brothers, and ideas of her own. In the 1870s, many people thought a girl should stay inside and do quiet things such as sewing and embroidery, but Annie thought otherwise. She preferred taking wild toboggan rides from the cemetery all the way down past Main Street or bouncing along in Father's buggy to the sound of Pocahontas' flip-flopping hoops. Through the trees, Annie could glimpse the white mountains far away in the distance. She dreamed about the world that lay beyond and about what she would do someday. Annie loved the stories and poems Father read aloud to her after dinner. On rainy afternoons, she would climb up to the attic to look at a children's magazine called St. Nicholas. In those days, children weren't allowed to go inside libraries. People didn't think reading was very important for children, especially not for girls. When Annie turned 19, many girls her age were already married. Back then, an unmarried girl like Annie might keep house for her parents or perhaps become a teacher or a missionary. But Annie thought otherwise. She decided to become a lawyer like her father, and day after day she went to his law office to learn how. Then, in one terrible week, Annie's parents both died from the flu. When her brother's wife died too, Annie stayed home to take care of her two little nieces. Venturing beyond the White Mountains would have to wait. After several years, her brother married again, and Annie heard exciting news. Libraries were hiring women as librarians. Annie packed her bags and traveled to Brooklyn, New York to enroll in the Pratt Institute Library School. New York was a big city. People, some people thought it was a dangerous place for a young woman to live on her own, but Annie thought otherwise. She loved walking along its busy cobblestone streets, going to the circus and the opera, and riding in a horse-drawn car across the Great Brooklyn Bridge. Annie studied hard. She graduated from library school and got her first job as a librarian at the Pratt Free Library. Some libraries were beginning to let children come inside, but Annie's library had something brand new, a library room planned just for children. Children could come in and take books off the shelves, and in the evenings, Annie read aloud to them, just as her father had read to her. Word spread about Annie's library until one day, a man named Dr. Boswick asked her to be in charge of all the children's sections in the 36 branches of the New York Public Library. Miss Moore dressed in her finest hat and suit and visited each library from Harlem to Chatham Square. She saw that many libraries did not let children touch the books for fear that they would smudge their pages or break their spines. They thought if children were allowed to take books home, they would surely forget to bring them back. But Miss Moore thought otherwise. She trusted children so she created a, a big black book with this pledge inside. When I write my name in this book, I promise to take good care of the book I use at home and in the library and to obey the rules of the library. Ms. Moore persuaded the librarians to use this pledge so all the children of New York could check out books and take them home. Ms. Moore pushed for other changes too. She urged the librarians to take down the silent sign signs and spend time talking with children and telling them stories. She pulled dull books off the shelves and replaced them with exciting ones, such as The Adventures of Tom Sawyer and The Swiss Family Robinson. She wrote, she wrote book reviews and made book lists to help parents, librarians, and teachers find good books for children and to encourage book publishers to publish better children's books. But many libraries still kept children books children's books locked in cabinets or tucked away in corners. They did not have enough books for children or enough shelves to put them on. So when it was announced that a grand new library would be built on Fifth Avenue and 42nd Street, Miss Moore was determined to make its new central children's room the best it could be for all the children of New York. Miss Moore had child-sized tables and chairs specially made. She chose beautiful pictures by N.C. Wyeth and other artists to hang on the walls. For the floors, she found rosy pink tiles from whales. She gathered collections of shells and butterflies to display. 
Then she filled the shelves with the very best children's books she could find. Finally, one warm spring day in 1911, the huge bronze doors of the New York Public Library swung open for the first time. Crowds lined the streets as the police escort brought the President of the United States, William Howard Taft, to dedicate the magnificent new library. When the library opened to the public the next day, the children of New York City walked through their own special interests in entrance into the new children's room. Hundreds of new children's books in many languages waited within reach, and beneath every window, a cozy window seat waited for children to curl up in it. From then on, every day seemed to hold a new surprise in the children's room. Miss Moore organized reading clubs and invited musicians, storytellers, and famous authors like Dr. Seuss to entertain the children. Often, Miss Moore would reach into her handbag and pull out a wooden doll named Nicholas Knickerbocker. Children who were just learning English felt less shy about talking when Nicholas was around. One day, the King and Queen of Belgium visited the New York Public Library. You must come see the children's room, Miss Moore told the Queen. That day, all the children in the library, from the richest to the poorest, shook hands with the king and queen. Outside the library walls, two world, war, two world wars, epidemics, and the Great Depression came and went. But inside, the children's room was always warm and bright, a place where children could meet other children and learn interesting things. In big cities and small towns across America, more and more libraries began to copy Miss Moore's central children's room. So did libraries in England, France, Belgium, Sweden, Russia, India, and Japan. When Miss Moore turned 70 years old, it was time for her to retire. Some people thought she would sit quietly at home, but Miss Moore thought otherwise. Her friends at the library gave her a set of luggage with a small green suitcase for Nicholas, and she traveled across the country teaching more people how to make good libraries for children. Today, libraries across America have thousands of books for children, and thanks to help and thanks to the help from a little girl from Limerick, Maine, who had ideas of her own, any child can choose a book from a library shelf, curl up in a comfortable seat to look through it, and then take it home to read.